Hello everyone, you are on the channel Galactic Express and at radio telescope installations across the globe, we Earthlings are listening for them. We have been sending signals into the void for decades. Every broadcast on this planet, every FM radio waves, every television transmission goes out into the infinite for all of eternity. Could anybody out there be listening? And how long would it take our radio signals to cover the distance? Let's consider once again the analogy where our sun is a marble on a sidewalk in downtown Manhattan. Alpha Centauri, the closest other star, is a marble on a sidewalk in Washington, D.C. And a more distant star is a marble in Rio de Janeiro, a rocket launching from Earth, the marble in Manhattan, would take 75,000 years to reach Alpha Centauri, the marble in DC. That same rocket would take 2 million years to reach the marble in Rio, a star 100 light years away. Fortunately, radio signals are much faster than rockets. They travel at the speed of light. So, rather than taking 75,000 years, a signal traveling from the marble in Manhattan to the marble in D.C. would only take four and a half years. A signal traveling from the marble in Manhattan to the marble in Rio would take 100 years to make the journey. Some of our earliest transmissions might now be getting close. But what about the reverse? Could intelligent alien civilizations be sending pings toward Earth to see if anyone is at home? Scientists on Earth are listening. Using technology originally developed for studying distant cosmic phenomena, like exploding stars. Many phenomena produce radio waves, and by studying the radio waves, you can also learn something about, you know, what's out there and how it works. So, using radio antennas to study the universe, that's an idea that goes back to before the Second World War. The huge radio antennas used today, called radio telescopes, are so advanced and so incredibly sensitive, they can easily detect the energy of a flea hopping. You know, they're just big reflectors, right? So the radio waves that are coming down and falling on the ground all around us, on the, the whole Earth after all, well, some of those radio waves will fall on these antennas. So they bounce off that big mirror, then they get focused to a very sensitive amplifier, and then the signals are sent via cables back into a control room that's right nearby here where they have sensitive receivers to sort of analyze the radio energy that's coming in. Dr. Seth Shostak is a senior astronomer at the SETI Institute in Mountain View, California. SETI is an acronym that stands for Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. The SETI organization also uses radio telescopes, but not for studying natural cosmic phenomena. The very same technology can also be used to look for signals that are made not by nature, but by, well, perhaps ET. And how might one know the difference? The kind of signal that we're looking for is what's called a narrow band signal. That is to say, it's just a signal that's, that's at one spot on the radio dial, that it's at one frequency. That's the indication that the signal is made by a transmitter, not made by nature. Of course, computers do the listening, not scientists. We have these specialized receivers that do all the listening, and the computers are monitoring the receivers. So typically, we'll have receivers that monitor, say, 100 million channels at once. So if the computers see a signal that looks like it might be extraterrestrial, as opposed to a radar at the local airport or telecommunication satellite or something like that, then the computer will follow up on that signal. And if it's beginning to look like, yeah, you know, this might be the big one, then it'll call us up and draw it to our attention. So we don't have to sit there and be bored all the time. To date, no such signal has been detected. But the SETI Institute presses on faithfully rightly so, in the minds of many prominent astronomers. 
absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. So we can't say, well, SETI hasn't found anything so far, so obviously there are no other intelligent civilizations out there. Uh, no, we can't say that, and I support their continuing to look. There are hundreds of billions of stars in our galaxy and hundreds of billions of galaxies in the universe. Just by sheer weight of numbers, I would be surprised if there is not intelligent life somewhere else in the universe. With so many possibilities, how do SETI astronomers determine exactly where to focus their telescopes and efforts? You want to pick star systems that have a good chance of maybe having a planet something like this one, so that there's a greater chance that you have intelligent life, but we don't really know very much about what kind of planets these stars have. So we just have long lists, literally millions of stars, relatively nearby our cosmic backyard. We just work our way through them. And what would happen if one day a SETI radio telescope picked up a signal that looked like it could be an alien transmission? One thing you would certainly do if you picked up a signal is say, look, I'm not going to believe it until somebody else can see it as well. Because, you know, there could be bugs in the software or hardware that are fooling you here. So what you would do is at the point where you thought this looks real, you would call up somebody at another radio observatory where they also have antennas just like this and tell them, look, look at that part of the sky over this range of radio frequencies, this part of the dial, and see if you find anything. And if it were confirmed at two or maybe three observatories, I think at that point you could safely go and have your press conference. 